I recognize the guy. I'm not sure if you do. <laughs> when cream hit the scene, I'm not sure of the exact year, it must have been 1966. I was totally blown away by I Feel Free, that song. I've never heard, I hadn't heard anything like that music before. And I remember I was with my friends um, at a public bath in Dusseldorf, and suddenly we ba 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 What's that? And then suddenly the, the drums and everything sets in, and just uh, from zero to 200 in half second. And so I was very impressed by Ginger Baker's drumming style. Jack Bruce, of course, a great, vo a great vocalist and bass player, but especially Eric Clapton's guitar. I really like that guitar and I tried to, unfortunately, or maybe that I had to do that, I tried to imitate. It was an interesting uh, experience to meet Marky e. Smith. We had dinner together and he told me, I think it was his nephew, younger nephew or something, who had three posters of musicians he admired on his, uh, in his room. One was Jimi Hendrix, the second I, I forgot, and the third was Michael Rota. Ha 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 ha! He laughed in that special uh, way and of course, it was hilarious. Um, I don't even know that there are any posters of me. Ah, this is 1983. Okay, um, to be quite honest, I was never a fan of David Bowie. I know that my Neu partner, Klaus Dinger, was a huge fan. He was very much into David Bowie. But um, I was interested because Brian Eno told me that he and David Bowie were listening to our music and talking about the music when Brian Eno visited Harmonia in 1976. And um, maybe it was not a surprise. In must have been summer 77, I got a phone call from uh, one of his staff asking me whether I would be interested in playing on the next album. And I said, basically, yes, wonderful idea. I'd like to talk to David Bowie about that. And then um, next was David Bowie on the phone, I don't know, maybe a day later. And we, we were very enthusiastic, uh, talked about details for a long time, you know, what instruments and, and so it was surprising. I still don't have the explanation, but I have my, my thoughts about what, hap what could have happened because a few days later a manager called and wanted to talk about contracts and money stuff and I, that was my real uh, idea, feeling about that uh, situation. I said, don't worry about the money, <laughs> you know, if the music's great, everything will be wonderful and it would have been, but I think that, that answer somehow scared the manager and also um, knowing, now knowing that um, the sales were dropping drastically in the 70s, David Bowie albums, his change to the Berlin period was not popular at the time with the fans. They really wanted him to be Siggy Stardust and things like that. And so all in all, I think somebody in his, um, in his group management probably took the decision to help Bowie by preventing that uh, collaboration from happening. And um, I got the next call from a secretary or someone just telling me, oh, you won't be needed in Berlin. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, I quite like his track Heroes, uh, although I must say, or I can say that um, Robert Fripp did a great guitar job, so nothing's wrong. I could have spoiled the track, who knows.
Oops, what's this? Ah, 2002. The Chili Peppers always came to Germany. They played in Germany and did interviews and kept on mentioning John, especially, and Flea, but especially John, how much he liked my music and especially also my solo work. In 2003, the Chili Peppers were again coming to Hamburg. He asked me, oh, Michael, would you like to um, attend the concert? Would you like to see the concert? The best place for you would be at the back of the stage near the monitors. You have a perfect view and you can see everything, hear everything. And I said, yeah, that sounds good. And so they started playing, did their set. And um, at the end of the set, they started jamming. Um, um, Omar Rodriguez Lopez of um, Mars Volta, they were the opening act that evening. He was jamming with them. And I remember thinking after a few minutes, this is strange because it didn't connect to the music they were playing before. But suddenly John came to the monitor and started waving in my direction. I turned around because I thought something wrong maybe. What's, what's, he, what's on his mind? And then I realized he wanted me to come on stage and join them. And I, I just sh shook my head and thought, no, nah, 20,000 people up there and I don't want to spoil the evening. And I wasn't prepared mentally anything. And I said, okay, give me a guitar. And so I went on stage and we, we jammed for maybe, I don't know, 40 minutes. And it was, it was a very, strange and special situation. John was so happy he was rolling on his back. He was, you know, he was just, we were like four guys playing together in one living room. It was not, we forgot about the people. The people were there and they were listening. And I remember there was also one German journalist who wrote, he, in the end, we were all crying for joy. You know, it was, very <laughs> impressive. A year later, he asked me to come over to the States and play um, my music, which surprised me. I thought we would be jamming, you know, but no, no, I want to play this. And he had to show me how to play my track Palmengarten because after recording that in, uh, on, on that album Lust um, in 83, I never played it again, but he knew it because he was playing along to it in his flat um, in Los Angeles. And that was very funny. He showed me how I played it, okay. Um, and that was, was great because Josh Klinghoffer, who's now the guitar player in Chili Peppers, joined us as drummer. Quite a, a, a nice group of people. What's this? I don't recognize it. I have to turn it around. Oops. Oh, the craft buddies. <laughs> oh, now I see it's the gondel kino, the bootleg, which doesn't even include Ralf Hütter, who's on the photo here. He was not with us, uh, but that's Heavy metal kids, whoever named a tray that. <laughs> but yeah, this is interesting. I want this. With my guitar, I tried to fill the gap, the sonic gap, because there was only Klaus playing drums, Florian doing very strange, awkward sounds, but also rhythmic. Florian back then did some really fascinating sounds treatments of flutes and especially the flutes and also on the violin. It was fascinating and in, um, in good concerts it was an exciting combination but at the end it was more, it was obvious that we didn't, we couldn't continue. There was too much struggling, too much fights and, and I'm happy that Klaus Dinger and I started Neu because that's when I really started doing my own music. And um, if you compare Hallo Gallo or the first Neu album 
with what, uh, with what we played live, you, I think you, you realize the difference. I was working with Harmonia in 1974. They contacted me and asked me whether I would be willing to join them on the Autobahn tour. But for me, it was no question. I was totally happy working with Harmonia. And then also there was the Neu project still. It also was clear that Kraftwerk was not my project. So I, I would not have been, you know, I would not have been happy just to be like um, a member who, I don't know, not take orders. I, probably they wouldn't have tried to give me orders, but um, the decisions wouldn't have been mine. It's different from my approach to music and I have to accept that the concept is so clear and so condensed. You cannot really argue, it's, it's very impressive the way they left away all the details which would, were always important to me, like disturbing details or colors in the music. My problem is always that I want to show too much and I have to struggle to convince myself to leave things away because I, I, I love all these details. Um, and they, I don't know, they, it, it has to do probably with their approach to music and maybe it's not very erotic. Uh, I think I have to say that. It's, it's, it's like, it's admirable, the music, but it, it doesn't touch my heart and it, it doesn't feel sexy. But that's my interpretation. Other people may have uh, very well have very different idea. But the most important thing is that I have high respect for what they uh, added to the music world and um, it will stay with us, that's sure, that's for sure. I am a robot. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Just cut.